Hello, I'm going to show you an introduction on how to set up and use R Markdown. Uh, R Markdown is a really, really neat feature uh, within R Studio, and there's a number of things that we can do with it. So uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, what we're working on here is a fresh install of R Studio. Uh, and so what we're going to do here is we're going to go in and we're going to select up here on a new document. We're going to select an R Markdown document. Now there's these other ones down here that we can use to, to go in and and do some other things and create files, but we're going to show you our markdown because it does have a specific syntax. Now one thing you'll notice here is that as it's working is that I might not have all the packages installed. And so what we see here is um, I'm going to actually select no and what we're going to do is we are actually going to install packages and we're going to install the our markdown package. Okay, and we're gonna go ahead and wait for that to install. And uh, this is a Windows machine. Uh, I know that on my uh, my Linux distribution, I didn't have to actually install the R, R Markdown package. So you may or may not have to, depending on uh, what operating system you are running. Uh, and so we're just gonna go ahead and, and wait and let this roll through. And once it does finish, we're going to to load it up. There's a uh, not a lot of neat features here. Okay, so we're all loaded up, and now we're going to open up and, and open up a new R Markdown document. Now we have the ability to choose an HTML, PDF, and Word document. Uh, so what we're going to do, title this here, is we are going to um, create this for a new Markdown document, and the author is going to be me. And so right now we're just going to select it as an HTML. This is an easy thing to change later on. Now what we see is that there's already uh, some 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 things that are included here, okay? Uh, and so as we hit that the knit HTML, is that we do have to uh, install it somewhere. So we're just going to create a file called ASDF, okay? And so as it's running here, is that it's actually going to generate this document for us, okay? And it's going to actually plot. Um, plot the information. Now depending on what you're looking at is that for example this block that chunk right there is uh, it's saying basically that we need to install the the knitter package and if you do not have that on there uh, because of course it all depends on what uh, package version you're downloading but we're going to make sure that we install the knitter package so that when we open up in our markdown document is it does pull it all together. So we see that we have the, um, we knit it as an HTML document and it pops it out and, and there we go. Um, the other thing that we can do is that we can change this here, we can knit it to PDF. And in order to knit to PDF, you do have to install a LaTeX distribution. And we can also knit it to Word, which is, which is kind of neat because it'll actually open up that as a, um, as a Word document and we can edit it accordingly. Okay. Uh, so going back and, and looking at this here is that we have a couple different sections and the really important part that we're looking at here is what is included within the um, the code chunks. Okay. So uh, in this third, first code chunk is that we are assigning some values and this is where we're going to place all of our code that we want to be executed in our markdown. So for example, if we're trying to say x is equal to 4, okay, is that we would say, all right, this is, this is the code and it's going to be evaluated. And um, then we're going to write some wording up, up top and we're going to say this is some wording about some stuff, okay? Uh, and then what we'll notice here, and I'll talk about this in a second, but these two hashtags here, which would be a comment typically in, in R, is that they are actually, this is showing us a header, so I'd just like to show you is that so we have this uh, this R markdown and we can actually create hashtags. So this is a um, so we can call this a bold heading, um, or actually more appropriately, it's going to be a big heading. And then we have the R markdown, and then we can put three hashtags. And this is going to be a smaller heading. And so this is going to organize things a little bit way. And so we put all of our wording up in this section right here. Okay, and I'll go ahead and knit this here real quick so you can check it out and see what it looks like. 
And so it's going to generate for us this here. And notice how we inserted this as with one hashtag, it made the, the bigger heading, two hashtags a little bit smaller, three hashtags is smaller than that, and anything that doesn't have those hashtags in front of it is just regular wording. Okay. So um, when we're looking at that, one thing you notice is that if we assign that value to four, that value of x there, um, is and we were trying to do something else to it. Let's say we're trying to, to multiply that value of x by two, and so we say uh, we want to say x is equal to x times two, right? And we execute this is that it's not going to actually spit out the value of eight, right? Because it is contained all in here. It's not printing anything. But the same sort of thing can be said is that if we write down in our console down here, we say x is equal to 4, it doesn't print anything. If we say x is equal to x times 2, right, it doesn't print anything out in the console. So in order to print it out, how are we going to do that? We're just going to type x, and it's going to display the value of x. Okay, so if we put then, now here, if we just say x, it's going to actually print that portion out to us. Okay, and so now that's what we see is when you type the X is that it actually generates it out down here below. Okay, uh, so that's kind of the the quick quick way we can do that. Make sure that everything is embedded in between the R functions, and we normally don't want to be debugging or working with our code inside of the R markdown because once we these get a little more complex, it does bog down pretty slow. So the recommendation is write your big script in a in a dot R file. Just write it over here in this part, and then when you know the code is working, then drop it into your snippets. Now, um, one thing that you'll notice is that in this right here is this echo equals false, and it actually says it when you open the, the R markdown file, but when it says this echo is equal to false, is what that's saying is don't actually print out the code, okay? So it's saying print out the results, but don't print out the code, okay? So that's what we see here. It prints out the results, but doesn't print out the code. Um, the other way we can do this here is that we can also specify the results, and we can say the results equal to, and we're going to use the hide. Okay, and then when we process this, you'll notice now is that it's not actually printing that x. So that's something that we might want to do if we are, um, for example, if I'm just trying to show how my code is working. Th this is when I'll use that results equals hide. And so this is a basic introduction into how we actually put things together in our markdown. Um, the important thing to remember, right, is that we just include everything that we want to get executed within these R backticks, and then we also may want to make sure we print things that we don't that we need to use this echo equals false parameter if you do not want to show your code because that might be something you, you're if you're making a presentation you might not really care if uh, the people looking at your presentation know what the code looks like. We also might want to hide the results if we're just trying to show someone how we're actually doing something. So that's the the basic introduction into it.